I know that you probably think you're going through some serious difficulties right now, and you probably are. But let me tell you, there's no problem that couldn't be made infinitely worse by the introduction of government and the intervention of government functionaries. Let us learn the lesson of Vicki Baker. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. But here's the deal. So here's the deal. And here's the deal. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Because here's the deal. Here's the deal. Either give me your ID or you go to jail. How about that? Catch me outside. How about that? How about that? How about that? Here's the deal. Our top story tonight is one that you could not dream up. A McKinney woman was selling her home. It had just gone under contract when a man barricaded himself inside and the rest you'll see. All right, on July of last year, 75-year-old Vicki Baker was excited to move on to the next chapter of her life in Montana by selling her home she owned for 12 years in McKinney, Texas. That sale would never take place on schedule, however, because the day before she was supposed to close, a SWAT team completely destroyed it. Baker was out of town on July 25th of last year, but her daughter was home when a distraught construction worker who had worked on her home before decided to invade Vicky's home. 50-year-old Wesley Little had holed up in the home along with a 15-year-old girl that he had abducted. When he came into the home, Vicki Baker's daughter ran out and called the police in the process. When the police were contacted, Vicki asked them not to destroy the home as she was closing on it the very next day but they didn't listen, of course. During the standoff, SWAT officers shot approximately 30 tear gas canisters into Baker's property, blew up her garage, and drove an armored vehicle over her fence. This is how Vicki Baker left her home of 12 years, a home she listed for sale last month when she retired to Montana. This is how it looks today boarded windows, a broken backyard fence, and destroyed garage door. Baker claims, and rightly so, that the cops went overboard on the damage they caused, completely disregarding any measure that could have limited the destruction to her home. They blew up her garage door to gain entry despite being given a garage door opener. As the Institute of Justice reports, the incident left Vicki in shock. When the smoke cleared, the home which her daughter was living in and which was under contract to sell was uninhabitable. The only living thing that survived the raid was her daughter's dog, which was left deaf and blind from the explosions. Though Baker was in shock at the damage inflicted on her property, she took temporary solace in the fact that she didn't cause the damage, so she wouldn't be liable for it. Unfortunately, that comfort was short-lived. When she sought out compensation for the damage to her home, the city of McKinney and her homeowner's insurance company told her that the police had immunity and wouldn't pay for a dime of the damage. A few days later, the potential buyer that she had walked away and the sale fell through. Vicki would go on to max out her credit cards to repair the damage, which was over $80,000 in order to sell the house in the winter. But the sale was for far less money than the original contract back in July. Since that time, she partnered with the Institute of Justice in a lawsuit against the city to sue them for damages caused by police to her home. Attorney Jeff Redfern said, In America, if you break it, you buy it. The McKinney SWAT team didn't just break Vicky's home, they destroyed it. Now it's time for them to pay for the damage that they caused. What happened to Vicky is unconstitutional. She was an innocent bystander. The police decided they needed to destroy her home to protect the safety of the entire community, but she shouldn't be left holding the bill for the damage. And to make matters worse, Vicky's insurance company would not cover any of the damage done by the police. I contact the city of McKinney and ask how to file a suit against them for recovery. I was told at that point there was absolutely no possible recovery, that the city had never paid such a claim and they had no intention of doing that. I waited a couple of weeks and actually called back and called back and spoke with their um, insurance department and their insurance actually told me, laughed at, I mean, she was very rude. She laughed at me and said, 
you know, you can file whatever you want, but there is no recovery. The police have complete immunity and so do all the city employees. Citing the pending litigation, neither the McKinney Police Department nor the city would comment on the destruction of Vicki's home. Baker said in a statement, I appreciate that the police did what they thought was necessary to protect the community, but it's unfair to place the cost replacing or redoing any of my flooring, the burst pipes, the damaged roof, the blown out garage doors, the broken doors, the toppled fence, to place that all on me just because the guy happened to pick my house and not someone else's. Under the US and Texas constitutions, the government is allowed to take private property for public uses like building a road or school, but the government is required to pay just compensation. The same is true when the government destroys private property for public uses. And taking a dangerous criminal off the street clearly benefits the public. The Supreme Court has repeatedly held that the Fifth Amendment's takings clause was designed to bar government from forcing some people alone to bear public burdens, which in all fairness and justice should be borne by the public as a whole. While Vicky's case is shocking, it's not at all isolated. Just last September, Erica Pruitt in Denver had her home destroyed by SWAT. At the end of the raid, she and her baby were left homeless with no compensation. A married couple claimed Fresno Sheriff's officers destroyed their house by using it as a training ground for a tear gas wielding SWAT team, 50 vehicles, two helicopters, a canine unit, and a fire truck because an unarmed homeless man had been found in their closet. And just like Vicky, after attempting to seek compensation for their incredible loss for over three years, the Jensens were told last year that they can kick rocks. The government who destroyed their home owes them nothing. Now guys, personally, I don't think the remedy here is to have the tax cattle foot the bill. Every officer and the police department should be required as a term of employment to carry insurance to cover the cost of damaging personal property. Just as an update to close out this case, after two frustrating years of trying to seek restitution, a federal jury in June of 2022 finally decided that Ms. Baker is entitled to $59,656.59 for the trouble. It's both a controversial and surprising decision. Normally, people like Baker get nothing. But it should be noted that the only thing more absurd than a jury having to force the government's hand in recompensing her is that Baker almost didn't have the privilege to bring her case before one. Federal courts in similar cases have ruled that the government can usurp, quote, police powers to destroy your property and avoid having to pay it back under the takings clause of the 15th Amendment, which is supposed to provide a remedy for such circumstances. So things were looking pretty bleak for Vicki. In November of last year, Baker's luck began to turn. A federal judge with a little bit of sanity, common sense, and decency denied the city of McKinney's motion to dismiss her case. In April, that same jurist, Judge Amos Mazant III of the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Texas, described the interpretation of the law barring Baker from suing as untenable. And in June of 2022, a jury handed down their ruling. The problem is that the city may appeal, which would delay any payout. In coming to his decision, Mazant invoked another unfortunate case, that of the Letch family, who had their $580,000 home ruined by a SWAT team as they pursued an unrelated shoplifter who broke in. And believe it or not, and this isn't saying much, but Greenwood Village, Colorado did more for them than McKinney would do for Baker, forking over all of $5,000. The federal court ruled that the family could not sue and the Supreme Court declined to take up the case. And that is why we call it the injustice system. And check this out, guys. Jeffrey Redfern, an attorney for the Institute of Justice, the public interest law firm representing Baker's case, said that this new ruling is different and should be the one that everybody's looking at as similar situations continue to pop up. Even though a number of federal courts have gone the wrong way on this issue, they've done so with very cursory analysis. But here's the kicker, guys. This does not set a precedent. Redfern said, quote, in this case, 
we put the city claims agent on the stand and she said, yep, I denied the claim and I deny every claim like this. And if this happens tomorrow, I would deny it again. Unfortunately for people like Vicki Baker, because we have a system built on injustice, this will continue to be a familiar story. And the moral of this story remains. There is no problem that you could possibly have that can't be made infinitely worse by governments and their reckless, destructive agents. Let me know what you think about this. Leave your thoughts about this in the comments section below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon, give it a thumbs up, share it with everybody you know. And don't forget to subscribe to my private email list through my website, highimpactflix.com, and subscribe to me over on Odyssey and BitChute. If you want to support the channel further, the Patreon, PayPal, Bitcoin, and Subscribestar links are in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video.